going on, buddy? My name is Elprince. Welcome back to yet another SCP reaction video. And today, reacting to one, I actually have no knowledge of how this is going to go whatsoever. The name of this SCP is SCP-2508, The Long Wait. I'm not sure what this is implying. I mean, obviously, someone is waiting for something for so long. But what does this truly imply in the world of the SCP universe? I honestly don't know, and I have no way to interpret it, but that's what this video is about, explaining what the long wait is. So we'll go ahead and get right into this in three, two, one, boom. See, make sure the quality was Dr. up this time Stafford had starting an session. Right a little bit he was one of the SCP Foundation's most brilliant minds, but right now that mind was being twisted by grief and confusion. One of his closest mm -hmm. friends and confidants at the Foundation, an anomalous astrophysics expert named Dr. Lilibeth Orion, had gone missing. Not killed, not kidnapped, truly disappeared without a trace. Back when Dr. Orion first fell off the map, Dr. Stafford had led the charge into the emergency investigation. It should come as a surprise to nobody that employee turnaround at the SCP Foundation is higher than perhaps any other organization on Earth. Yeah. We've made whole videos about the various ways unfortunate Foundation operatives might die in the line of duty. But few th how much do you think their pay is <laughs> if employees are being killed so quickly how much do you think they're being paid to even stay on the job or for the recruiting program things are worse than never having the closure of knowing what actually happened to your missing friend dr orion had experienced a tragedy almost a year before her mysterious disappearance her husband and young daughter were both killed in a car accident Naturally, rumors spread that perhaps the grief had just gotten too much for the poor doctor, but Dr. Stafford wouldn't hear a word of it. Part of him knew that Lilibeth Orion was still alive, out there, somewhere, but he needed to discover exactly what had happened to her. This is what sparked the obsession that would destroy his respectable Foundation career, and perhaps even his mind. He'd step beyond professional boundaries by accessing a number of deeply personal documents, including personnel files and Site-19 project histories. He read through re- Bro, that is an immediate bullet to the head. Him doing this. That's an immediate bullet to the head. Themes of archival documentation concerning unexplained disappearances of Foundation personnel including the disappearance of 05-7 several decades prior. Dr. Stafford's oh? search went on for 20 years, still finding very little, except an arcane pattern of connection between each of those who disappeared. All were Foundation employees with three degrees of separation from one another, to put it very reductively. A huge number of disappearances, Dr. Lilibeth Orion included. He didn't know what was taking them, or why, but he would bet his life on the belief that there portal. was one force behind it all. And while Dr. Stafford had no real way of knowing, he was indeed right. Nearly 20 years prior, Dr. Orion found herself in a strange and unfamiliar place upon waking. A year before that, she lived in a two-story suburban home, but after the deaths of her husband and child, she moved into an apartment in the city. That house just had too many empty spaces in it for her. But now she was neither in her old home nor her new apartment. She was in a rustic two-level cottage somewhere in the countryside. Naturally, Dr. Orion first tried calling for help, but there was no cell phone signal and no Wi-Fi. After that, she tried fleeing the property on foot, only to encounter its first anomalous effect. Upon walking out of one edge they of the end property, up on one side, on the other side, simply reappear, entering the other. The house sat at the center of a half mile. Bro, immediately what comes to mind is one of the Pokemon movies. I don't remember which one it was. I think it was the eighth movie with the two uh, legendary Pokemon going at it—the big blue one and the purplish silver one. I don't remember the name of it. Even though I never watched the Pokemon cartoons, which I do intend to in the future. Um, I do remember watching a couple of the movies to get myself embraced a little bit more into the Pokemon universe. But that's the one I could think of. If you know the name of that movie, let me know in the comment section. Grassy land. Because that's immediately what comes to my mind. Wholesome picket fence. A lonely swing sat near a tree in the yard. No matter how many times Dr. Orion tried to run past the confines of the building's land, she would appear facing the rustic little cottage once more. Next, she started yelling and calling for help. Nothing. Only birds and squirrels seemed to register her cries, and they ran away in fear. Nothing about the cottage suggested its location. Was she still even in the United States anymore? 
and the flat, distant, and uninhabited plain stretching out beyond her only served to confirm exactly what she feared. There would be nobody out there to help her. This would be a terrifying situation for anyone, but thankfully Dr. Orion's foundation training allowed her to keep cool under pressure. She immediately switched into research and investigation mode. <laughs> Perhaps there would be some key to her escape or rescue elsewhere in the cottage. Knowledge is power, and Dr. Orion certainly didn't like feeling powerless. The first and second floor of the cottage felt relatively conventional. Furniture, knickknacks, charming but slightly peeled wallpaper. Nothing about it was overtly anomalous. Soon, however, she detected it's a like, strange- It's like she fell into a- uh, what do you call it? Co cottage version of the back rooms. Anyone else get that feeling? Because that's what I get. Noise coming from the attic, like the slow chugging of an old machine. Upon climbing up there, she found a strange contraption made from wood and metal sitting in the corner of the attic, with a plaque affixed to the front. It also had several PVC pipes running out of it and feeding into the wall, off into an unknown location. Dr. Orion approached and studied the plaque. It read, Please fill this machine once per day at noontime. We cannot arrive with as much haste if the machine runs dry. We hope you understand, and trust that you will keep your side of the arrangement now that we have kept ours. Thank you. How strange. She needed to investigate further. Down in the basement, she found another more anomalous element to the house. A large clump of strange, unidentifiable vegetation. It was largely oh. a kind of murky green, with notes of red and purple that made it seem almost otherworldly. Strangest of all, when in the plant's proximity she heard an odd, static-like noise coming off of it. It also intermittently let off a strange red pulse. It didn't take long for Dr. Orion to intuit that this pulse was actually Morse code, delivering two distinct messages on a loop. The first was, thanks for keeping the plants fed, hit a snag in traffic, might take a bit longer than expected. And the second was, please keep this hatch open only in good weather. Please keep it closed for rain, snow, and the chill of winter. Thank you. Just as the message suggested, there was a hatch in the ceiling up above, angled perfectly to allow daylight to filter through onto the alien vegetation whenever it was left open. The last notable thing that Dr. Orion found in the house was seemingly the least supernatural of the three, and yet the what? most anomalous, in the traditional sense of the word. It was a closed network SCP Foundation computer terminal, and a rather old model at that. She managed to boot it up and gain access with her login credentials, but what she saw definitely didn't bring her any comfort. She was currently trapped in the middle of what the victims of this place call SCP-2508. The first and most prescient piece of news was that this little predicament Dr. Orion found herself in was a life sentence. Only one person would ever be trapped here at a time and they would remain here until they died, one way or another. All she could do in the meantime is work to maintain the house, and hope that whoever its owner was would someday return and give her some respite. That's when she found a final note left by 05-7. It read, I was driving home when it happened. It was about a 30 minute commute through a lot of back roads and I was terribly drunk. It was one of those XK class scenario averted let's celebrate occasions, so I didn't really hesitate to down more than my fair share of wine. When I arrived at my front porch, car askew so that the front tires dug into the dirt on my front lawn, I stumbled for the door. After a great amount of fidgeting, I managed to get my key in the lock and finally got the door open. But then when I looked around, it wasn't my house at all. It was this place. Dumbfounded, I went back outside. Surely I thought I had accidentally entered another house in my drunken stupor. But now not even the outside was as expected. The suburban urban environment had shifted to a countryside. My car was still there, sitting on the asphalt road, which was now a dirt road. Everything was different and it was never quite the same. That was all 23 years ago. No doubt my position as 05 was replaced long, long ago, and here I am, having found startlingly few answers. Every once in a while I'll find an old shoe or a photograph of someone who came before me, and I am reminded how we are all chained together in oblivious and obligatory service to this place. Lately the clouds keep rolling in and the plants in the basement are buzzing more than usual. I hear the gurgling of water draining through the pipes and the walls from that old dusty machine. And sometimes I try to find where that water goes. I think it goes out beyond the house, into the grassy field in front of the swing set. When I lay on the grass, sometimes if I listen very closely and everything else is quiet, I swear I can hear noises coming from far below the ground. 
They sound like some kind of clockwork mechanism. It's gears mm. quietly humming. I don't know what it means, and I don't think I ever will. Undoubtedly, the most puzzling thing about this place is really quite a small feature. There's a computer terminal in the study, and it looks like one of the oldest things in the house. It's clearly from the foundation, but it's unsettling to say the least. We would have known about this if the Foundation knew, I'm sure. But if that's truly the case, then it still doesn't explain how the anomaly got its number designation. Is it arbitrary, or is it actually cataloged in the outside world? I don't think it's possible to know from here. Sometimes, I feel like I'm waiting for something, or for someone. It's not for someone to save me, but it's as if I'm waiting to meet someone here. I dream of what that meeting might be, or why it might be in the first place. But somewhere deep down I know that I will almost certainly die here, and this long wait will be passed down to another to continue waiting with bated breath for something. But what exactly that something is, we can't be sure of. Maybe someday I'll learn how the food gets restocked. As she finished the note, Dr. Orion felt a cold wave of dread wash over her. She wasn't just trapped. She was the latest in a long line of trapped, doomed people who'd been confined and then perished in this lonely little cottage, keeping the place in shape while someone or something made its long journey back. If this was anything to go by, chances are she wouldn't be the last one to perish here after decades of waiting. As the months turned into years, and the years turned into decades, Dr. Orion stuck it out. She learned some things about the place, things she assumed she might be able to pass on to others. Like the machine in the attic, the one that needs water every day is somehow tied to both the integrity of the cottage itself and its occupant. If not properly watered, the occupant will begin to grow sick and eventually start to die. Back on the outside, Dr. Victor Stafford was finally disciplined for his extracurricular investigations. He was stripped of all his titles and clearances for spending all his time searching into the mystery of Dr. Lilibeth Orion. The Foundation frankly had more important things to deal with. They thought Dr. Stafford was crazy. They had no idea how deep this mystery went, about how many Foundation operatives were taken, or most important of all, the fact that Stafford knew who would be taken next. Back in SCP-2508, things were different for Dr. Orion. Nearly 20 years had passed, and she was in a different stage of her life. To some extent, she'd come to terms with her new reality. When she dreamed of her old life, she would often wonder whether those dreams were her actual life, and her time in the cottage was just a dark, recurring nightmare. Maybe she'd die here someday, and let another take her place. Or maybe she wouldn't. Dr. Orion, you see, was always the curious type. Even if she did die here, she'd never let herself die without knowing what really happened at this strange little cottage. And even more importantly, what was happening under it. Now so go check would. out The oh. Horror of Body Stealing Rain SCP-3300, and you'll never make it to SCP-084 Static Tower for more frightening anomalous places you'll never Okay, I thought that was going to go into her, that last segment there was going to go under, with what she was going to find under the ground, where the water goes, what the sound of the gears are. I thought that was where to go, but that was not at all what, what I was really expecting with this. In the slightest, I thought it was just going to be an actual, like, entity itself, not like a location, you know what I mean? But... Probably not one of my favorite SCP to be honest, but considering that nothing truly, well, crazy happened aside from the doctor disappearing and her discoveries, that's just about it. But if you guys enjoyed today's reaction video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.